Hey guys, my name is Kodik and in this video I will be showing you guys how to log Discord messages from different Discord servers uh, using the Discord gateway and I already made a video on this but as you probably already know that video is outdated uh, they, they changed their gateway a bit so you can't really use that method anymore so that's why I decided to create a new video uh, an update video to show you guys how you can do it since it is still possible just a minor change in the code so as you can see here I have a discord uh, account that I just created here and the goal here is to log every single message that I send in here um, to the terminal uh, that I'll be opening up in Visual Studio Code so uh, I have a folder here and I'm going to create a new file it's gonna be called main.py and we're going to edit this with, uh, with Visual Studio Code so I'm gonna open it in code and once I have it opened it's my second screen we can start to write some code so the first thing we need to do is import the WebSocket library now in order to install this you need to type pip install WebSocket because there's actually two different modules called WebSockets, you have to type this out in order to install the correct one. So once you've installed that, you also want to import JSON, which is already installed on your Python version. You want to import threading in order to keep the connection alive to the, to the gateway. And then we need to import time too, just in case we need to time sleep in our code. Uh, so the first uh, function we're going to create is going to be called send JSON request it's very similar to my first video basically in here we're going to specify whatever we send to the gateway so it's going to take WebSocket instance and it's going to take a request and in here all we do is send uh, a JSON version so JSON dumps requests to the WebSocket so whatever we put here we're going to send into the WebSocket so that's the first uh, function that we're going to create it's a very simple function the next one is going to be how we receive uh, the JSON payload. So receive JSON response. If I can type correctly, response. And this is going to take a WebSocket as well. And that's all. We are going to create a variable called response and it's going to uh, be whatever we receive from the WebSocket. And then uh, we're going to check if the response actually exists, exists. And if it does, then we are going to return a JSON version of this response so let's just load it like this and that's our second function uh, now we're going to have to implement the heartbeat function which I kinda failed a bit in my last video uh, so I'm going to do it correctly this time uh, so just name this heartbeat and it's going to take the interval and it's going to take WebSocket then we're going to just print heartbeat begin so we know that it's actually like being started Then, then we're going to create a loop, so while true, uh, then we want to time sleep, whatever interval we specify up there, so let's pass that in here, and we also want to create the heartbeat JSON, so heartbeat JSON is going to be an object, in here we want an OP code of 1, and we want the D to be null. That's all we want to. That's all we want to put inside this object, and then actually this is going to be a string, and then we want to send this to the server uh, using our function that we specified up here. So send JSON request. Um, so we're going to send it into the WebSocket that we're going to create later on, by the way. So we're going to send to the WebSocket the heartbeat JSON, and just to verify that it works, we're just going to print heartbeat sent. Basically what the heartbeat does is that it tells the server that we still want the connection to be alive So as soon as you stop heartbeating, uh, it's gonna drop the connection after like 40 seconds or so So it's a very important function that you implement Now we can actually create the WebSocket So we're going to make use of the library that we imported So WebSocket.WebSocket to create a new instance Then we are going to connect to the Discord gateway Which is a link that I'm going to put in the description below So you can just go ahead and copy it so it's a WebSocket link, this is it, and after that we are going to create a new event variable and it's just going to receive um, the first response. When, whenever we connect to the gateway they're going to send back a, an acknowledgement and that's what we are going to be receiving here. So this one takes the WebSocket and then we want to specify the heartbeat interval which is going to, uh, as I said, uh, Discord is going to send it to this variable and then we want to destructure it so 
um, heartbeat interval is going to be whatever is inside the event D key and then its heartbeat interval. So that's how we get the heartbeat interval that we're going to be using later on up here in the function that we created. Uh, so once we have that, uh, we also need to uh, change, actually we can do it right here, so divide it by 1000 because it's actually in seconds and not milliseconds. Now we need to make use of the heartbeat function, so we're going to call the threading library and we are going to start new thread. This one's going to take the heartbeat and it's going to take the heartbeat interval as well as the web sockets. So basically what we're doing here is that we're starting a new thread in the background that's going to uh, run this function all the time and this is what we pass into the function. Now we need to specify our tokens. So token and however if you want to know how you can find your token just go into your Discord client, control shift i, just type whatever in whatever channel. So if I type s here it's going to send a typing request, you can click on it expand this, scroll down until you can find the authorization, then just go ahead and copy the authorization, paste it in here as a string, and then we have that. Now we want to specify the payload, which is going to be an object, it's going to take an OP code of 2, and we're going to create the D object in here, which is going to um, contain the token, which is the token that we specify up there. It's going to contain the properties, uh, which is just some random dummy data they can put in, or you can just copy what I write. Um, so you need the OS, which can be anything, uh, I'm just going to type Windows, you need the browser, which can be anything, so Chrome in this case, and then you also need the device, which I'm going to specify to be a PC. So that's, uh, that's all we need inside the payload object and if you noticed uh, that we don't have the intent anymore since that's actually what broke uh, the code in the last video. So this is all we need and once we have this we can send this to the server. Uh, so send JSON request which is only going to happen once by the way. So we send to the WebSocket this payload and once we have done that we want to open up the loop. And every time we receive an event we're going to store it inside this event uh, variable, so receive JSON response and obviously we pass in the WebSocket and then we're going to have a try and catch here. So the purpose of this video is going to uh, be a Discord uh, message logger, so I'm going to create a F string here that's going to show the name of the person who sent the message as well as the message. So that's how we get the author and then we want the colon and then in the next uh, part of the message or the, the, printed, uh, the printed text we want the, uh, the actual message that's, uh, that has been sent. So it's in event, it's also in D but in this time it's just in the contents. So that's how we get the message. And we are almost done now, all we have to do is to handle the OP code. So OP code events OP and if this code is 11 then that means that we have received a heartbeat. So and now we just need to have an exception for this, so if it doesn't work we just pass and that's basically all we have to do. I just made a typo here. Alright, so if you run this now, we are going to be able to see... Um, it says heartbeat begin, so now the connection is alive. And if I type anything... Let's see if I can make this live here. If I type anything, it's going to show up here. I can spam, it's going to show up in real time. Now I'm going to join a different server to show you guys that you can actually get uh, the messages of others as well. Uh, so let me just join the server. As you can see, a lot of messages were sent. If we go into the safe space, uh, this is where people send messages. And if, whenever it's empty, that just means that it wasn't a message. So this was an image. And as you can see here, this guy sent something. Uh, and you saw it in here. 
So as you can see, the content is no longer empty. We actually get the message, uh, even if it's not you yourself that is sending it. So now we can log any server uh, forever. And this is probably going to be working for a long time since we don't have the intent anymore. And that's basically all I want to show you guys in this video. And if you found it helpful, then please leave a like, thumbs down, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video.